in their own ballpark. Redemption up for grabs for the Minnesota Twins. An off day tomorrow, then the postseason begins for them on Tuesday against the Houston Astros. Despite a loss this afternoon, the Twins can go to sleep tonight. AL Central champions for the second straight year. What a regular season we have witnessed so far. The Twins only getting started. We'll have an hour free and post game show on Tuesday and look forward to seeing you then. Keep out the elements and help cut energy bills with high. Hey, the rain's coming. The furniture's gonna get soaked. Furniture? I'll start at the top. You start. The president's businesses are losing money and also how he manages to pay so little in taxes. Well, that's one of the most interesting parts of the New York Times reporting is that they describe one of the means and methods that the president had done this. They said that he had made about $400 million from being on The Apprentice, not income he had made from any of his actual buildings that he owned or golf courses that he owned, but he made $400 million from The Apprentice and then took that money and funneled it into risky businesses and into new businesses and into some that he already owned. And then he took the losses that those businesses were generating and used that to reduce his tax bill. So it, it wasn't through you know new income that he was making. It was this, this method and this scheme that he was trying to just use the money for The Apprentice to then get these losses. And and another way that he had reduced his taxes, according to the New York Times, was by writing off a number of expenses, including $100,000 in linen and silver at Mar-a-Lago, $70,000 on haircuts, and about $200,000 in landscaping at Mar-a-Lago. So the president was taking his... Whether it's in the Middle East or the efforts we've made to confront the Chinese Communist Party, I think you can see coalitions of, of like-minded, freedom-loving people... I wonder what this looks like to you in terms of a political strategy for Joe Biden. We'll get more into the details of the economics of this report in just a second. But right. the debate is on Tuesday. This definitely right. changes the complexion of the debate. This may well change what the topics are, change what Chris Wallace asks first. So Joe Biden has to make some decisions about how he wants to message on this between now and then and then how he wants to message a path forward should he become president in light of this reporting. What do you think is sure. his best bet right now? So, so Joshua, he's been setting this up. I don't think he knew the story was coming, but it was a, like a, a, a working guy from Scranton against a, a you know, rich guy from Manhattan. So he's been hammering these kind of middle-class themes home during the election. This is not new, and I mean, this just fits right into what Joe Biden has been saying, but I've noticed that he's had a, a, a real focus on this kind of middle class messaging in his campaign of, in, in the month of September. So I, I, it's hard for me to believe that the people in Wilmington are not just ecstatic by the story. They've had a, you know, I'd be honest with you, you would expect me to say this, but this is one of the best days that any presidential campaign could possibly have. And this story fits right into it, where people around the country deeper purpose around that club other than just soccer it's all 375 horsepower because of this we built Ford Burwood at the White House uh, John what's the reaction from the White House Anderson the reaction has been entirely on brand from President Trump when he was asked at a news conference this afternoon he ducked on the specifics of the New York Times story he deflected by saying he had paid a lot of state income taxes as opposed to federal income taxes he denounced the New York Times as biased, said that they're going after him because he, he's a conservative Republican, and he denounced the story itself as fake. Yeah, basically, well, first of all, I paid a lot, and I paid a lot of state income taxes, too. Uh, the New York State charges a lot, and they paid a lot of money in state. Uh, it'll all be revealed. It's going to come out. But after, after the auditors, after the, it, I'm being, they, they're doing their assessment. We've been negotiating for a long time. Things get settled, like in the IRS. But right now, when you're under audit, you don't do it. You don't do that. So we're under audit. But the story is a total fake. And all of this, or is this one, you know, we had the same exact questions, usually asked by the same people. And that took place four years ago. You remember. Now, of course, we all remember that Hillary Clinton brought up the issue of whether Donald Trump paid taxes in their debate four years ago in the 2016 campaign, and when that happened, the president bragged about it. 
Yeah, he did. He said he was. The only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. Now, the question is whether all those blue-collar voters and taxpayers who have backed the president are going to think that they've paid more in income taxes than him because he's smarter than them or because of something else. Joe Biden has framed his presidential campaign as Scranton 